We are never alone. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. So I want to jump on and do a little um, couple things dropping in today. Um, we are actually um, the message being in download that we are never actually alone, although it may seem like it. And so the illusion of feeling lonely um, or unloved, I did a video on that, um, is an illusion. We're never alone. Uh, we always have a part to play in the role, whether it's our lives or another life. And we come into this reality um, on our own individuality, right, as a person who we are, but we are never alone because we have people who greet us on this side, right? And then as we are passing over back to the other side, we have people who are greeting us on that side. And that's going to be based on whoever you resonate with. And I know a lot of people confuse the passing over as religious because of their belief system. And so if you hold the belief of a religion to a God that you look up to or something like that, um, those are the ones that may receive you when you pass over. Now, if not, you're going to have um, those who maybe are family members um, to receive you. Um, if not, you may be a loved one, your uh, romantic partner or your child or your pet. It really depends on what is going to allow you to be received onto the other side so you will go with them. And they can take you home. They can derive you right to where you need to go. Um, because if you think about it, when we're passing over, right, and somebody shows up that you don't like, are you going to go with them? No, <laughs> right? So we really want to contemplate these things and kind of think them out. And as you do, it kind of makes sense. But in order to do that, you have to let go of your belief systems on what it actually is because. That is just a thought process that's working behind the scenes of what you thought and took up and accepted of the past generations that have been passed down because they don't themselves know. So uh, the awareness behaves itself, you know, uh, what they say to the throne, but to, to who you are, right? What your awareness is, what your experience is going to be. And so that's why there's a mix up between, oh, you know, it's religious when we die and we have to go through Jesus or we have to go through this one, this master, or this one, or this God, or whatever it is. But in reality, it's just you holding on to your belief system as you're transitioning through, and that's what's working for you. And so it's not to say that it isn't correct or wrong. It's just the way it's going to get you home, right? So where you need to be, so that way you will go with them. And so you're having a direction uh, in going. Now, if you're not aware of the process, um, you end up going, um, for me, when I had mine, I went into um, this like a black void, right? From the body to the black void. And then I realized I didn't have a body. And so I didn't know how to communicate over there. And so they, there was a stream of light that came into the void, the darkness. And then um, it was, it was almost like, there was this huge, big, shining light um, that was just coming forward into this darkness. And within the light, because you couldn't see them, right, because they don't have a body, but you know they're there. It's like an invisible body. So, like, if you were to look at your energetic body and take, you know, the body form off, that's kind of what it's like. You're reading energy, right? And so it's like the fit, the the form of a body, but it's not a body, right? So you know they're there and you can telepathically um, talk and communicate with them. So I had to relearn and drop my physical because I don't have that anymore, right, on that side. So I had to remember and they told me to use telepathy, right? And so those are the light bringers. Um, and because I don't go through Jesus, I don't go through anything and at the time. I didn't even believe in um, that there was a God or if there, and it's not that I was atheist and I didn't practice anything. I just didn't do anything right? <laughs> because my life was so much suffering. Like I didn't even, and it was a lot about, you know, trying just to survive and get through my life. Like I didn't even really have any kind of intention or space or drive or, you know, 
desire to even think about that on those terms because when you're in like survival mode and trying to make your life work and trying you're all wrapped up in that like you don't have time for that <laughs> really um and so that's part of it like when i first started on the the path of awakening you know they they shared that with me that you know when somebody is in those places they don't have time to think about that they're just focused on what they're trying to get you know whether that's survival trying to get a job trying to get into a place where they can then start obtaining a higher level of conscious and then you start once you meet that level you then become um in a place where you can then focus your intention on what's beyond this right because then you have satisfied in all your needs that's what a lot of people don't reach that place because we have so much poverty um, in the world and things like that, that we actually don't, a lot of people don't meet that, that space where they can actually be at a peace with themselves where enough long enough where they can start diving into, you know, looking at more beyond uh, this world and this realm, basically about why, you know, everything is happening the way it is and what it is and what's, what this life is about. Right. And so, um, that was part of the, one of the first teachings. They have that in one of the pre-books, so um, that's in there. But we're all at different levels, right? And so having that understanding and awareness, that's why some people are where they are, and we're all at different places, right? And so through our, throughout our journey, but also, um, you know, that was part of what had led me to my awakening, right? Because of my life, where I was, and I was, couldn't get out of, yeah, and I was kind of trying all different avenues, trying to seek the way through, right? And so um, everything was kind of being blocked. And then so that kind of just led into the awakening, the near-death experience. But anyway, without going off too much further, you know, on the other side, we have those who greet us, right? And so that's really going to be based on your life for this lifetime. What are your thoughts, your beliefs? Um, and who is more likely to receive you and bring you home? Right. And so that's where a lot of people get the confusion about, how, you know, it's it's a heaven or hell or, your, you know, things like that. They start bringing in their um, belief systems to it. Right. So life is set up in a way that we never are alone. So we never journey alone. We're never alone, of course, unless we are wanting to go live up in a mountain. But then, of course, at that point, we are still never alone because we have those on the other side. You know, um, if we can go to the furthest ends, even up into like a cave and a mountain and just live there for uh, by ourselves as an individual, we're still never alone because we have spirit, we have source, we have nature, we have so many things that are around us that gives us the support that we need for our journey. And so we are never journeying alone. It's just ourselves are cutting itself off that we think we are lonely or unloved, right? And so when we cut ourselves off, then that's where people start going into the feeling of being alone. But it's just a feeling that arises, right? Which gives you an indicator that you are going, you know, further away from source, right? And so it's an indicator of not being connected, right? And so you're falling into the absence of source and love right and so that's what the loneliness is um, feeling unloved because we're always there and so a lot of times because we are in the human concept and we don't have our intuitive abilities activated uh, we may not see those on the other side but they are there right they're always there and we just can't see them or know them if we're cutting ourselves off but we are never alone on the path no matter where you are what you're doing there's always somebody or something there for you for instance, when I was in college, right, and um, even then, like, I was being given information downloads on uh, when I was writing papers and things because I looked at my papers and I was like, where did that come from? <laughs> so, um, and I do automatic writings. Um, so that really kind of shows me that we have, you know, those who are helping us on the journey of no matter what we're doing and so you have everything you know set up for you uh, on the journey it's you're never you know journeying alone and it's not that you're never alone because you're an individual and so on the individual level you may or appear as if you are because we can't see beyond it but it's set up in a way that you always have something there for you right to help you no matter what it is and it ends up showing up you know, even if you're like, and I've had this experience and it was really interesting, like, um, 
I was just nowhere to be and nobody was around. And but then this person all of a sudden shows up and then this interaction and then all of a sudden they disappear. Right. And so <laughs> you do have those um, instances and experiences where even if you are uh, away, you know, from people and a person shows up instantaneously and just appears and then disappears, it happens. Right. And that's them coming in and out of the um, the universe of unified fields of where you are uh, to help and guide you at that point. And so it's really up to you, you know, if you're going to cut yourself off or um, be open to it, you know, your awareness. But we are never journeying alone. Right. And so I can't really say that you're never alone because if you cut yourself off, then you are alone. But then at some point you do come back into the existence of being, you know, uh, present with yourself at some point. And so it kind of pops in for you wherever you are. But it's just, the, you know, the cutting yourself off that makes you feel alone or, um, you know, unloved, things like that. And I kind of did that on that other journey. But as far as also wanting to, you know, we have the coming in from the side because we're leaving that side. So we have them on that side. We come in here and then we're... Um, you know, greeted and received by those who are on this side. And then on the passing over, you're also, uh, same thing, greeted and received by those on the other side, depending on who you are and what your experience is and what you're allowing, what you're not. Um, from my experience, again, it was just, um, they're called light bringers or light receivers. Um, they are, they come into the light uh, to get you to bring you out um, of the dark, the void to the other side. And so that's the experience that I had because I don't really relate to anybody or anything, right? Because <laughs> um, my life had been so traumatic that like I wasn't, I wouldn't even be willing to go with my own parents, right? So, <laughs> or anybody else. So um, it wasn't any of those for me. It was just light beings that I was familiar with. I knew their energy. And so that was the case. So it was non-biased um, by anything or anything or provoked by anything or anyone because I just knew I felt it was okay um, tuning into them. You know, I didn't have any judgment or, you know, beliefs to go on as I transitioned over in from the, the void to the light um, to go home. So right there, it gives you a, an understanding that it's only based on our beliefs, right? So from that point, we just go to where we need to go and we might have the life review or whatever it is that comes up next for you. Everybody's journey is going to be different. And I talk about the life review, some of the questions that you might incur um, uh, as you're going through it and the process. Um, so with that being said, at the same time, um, you know, we also will have uh, very much similar experiences with others, right? And so that was part of the download um, this morning. And so it, it actually had posed a question also for me, um, you know, during the download, like, do you know someone who has not had your experience on some level, right? Um, and so uh, for that, uh, to dive into that, the experience that we have, everybody's going to have the same experience. And that's considered within a lifetime. Now, a lifetime is a life stream. So we think of lifetime in human terms as this life. But we have past life, this life, this life, this life, this life. We have our continuing chain of lifetimes on multiple different levels because we have a multi-universe, doing different things, being different people, <laughs> having different lives. So everybody's going to end up with the same experiences in the end. Everybody's going to, ex you know, experience the same things, the emotions, the feelings. Um, it's just going to be in different ways. So, for instance, and I've talked about this in other videos, um, you know, me as Laura may have been, you know, abused by a romantic partner. Maybe last time it was the father. Maybe the time before that was the mother. Um, or maybe a future time it'll be like the children, right? So no matter what it is, we're all going to have the same relatable experiences. So we're never alone, even in our experiences, even though we feel like because we're going through them alone at the moment in the time of the lifetime that we're having it, um, that makes up the stream of consciousness. It's the awareness of it that we have it and we can understand from a certain perspective. And so that brings in the awareness of feeling compassion and understanding 
uh, for another person's journey, which is love, right? So when you can have that, you can understand the experience and relate to them, which is the relatedness, um, which I talk about in different videos and is in the book. Relatedness is that which is outside of you, uh, that you are attracting onto yourself, that brings it to you. And so you may actually come into contact with other people who've had your experience in this lifetime, or maybe just a knowing of it, and they can understand it from that perspective that shows that you've had that experience in a past experience um, on some time on some time frame level level um, of where you are, maybe not just right now, right? Because you know there may be times where in a lifetime you may have a uh, rich life, um, and this person's have a poor. You're not going to relate on that level. Right, but you'll have an understanding on some level, right? And so you may have experienced it in your life, this lifetime or a past lifetime, from a different perspective. So say, maybe you were born into, um, you know, a poor family, but then you were rich, and so you meet somebody who's poor, and so then you can relate, right? So it's not always a rich to a rich, but maybe a rich to a poor, and then having that understanding, you can re relate to them because you were there. So that happens on multiple different levels of awareness, um, depending on where you were on the chain of different multiple lifetimes, if that makes sense. So there's always a relating uh, to others, so you're not alone in your experience. It's just that you are going through individually your own experience at the time that you're going through it, but there's always somebody there that can relate to you to journey with. So you're never alone in that way either, right? So no matter what it is, you're never alone. And that's just the way that it's set up. And so, you know, we should never really think that we are alone in it. And that is part of the suffering <laughs> um, component that we believe that we are alone and nobody understands, right? And so they can't see it from our point of view because they haven't had our exact same experience. But if you think about it, our relatedness um, is your attraction to another person, right? And so it's also projection, what we project from within, outside of us, right? We can see it in other people that they've had that same experience, right? Maybe on a different level, in a different way, but they still have the relatedness, and that's what is the attraction. Um, so people will come into your lives to help you, right? They'll show up for you. That's the attraction. But it's an opportunity to develop... Um, compassion and understanding for another person, which is the lesson in it, right? And so there's a purpose in all suffering. So from that standpoint, not only are we not alone in it, we all experience it and that's purpose that we have so many people going through that situation. So we have people to relate to, right? And so we all sign up to have the experience, not just for ourselves, but to help others, right? If that makes sense. So there's a lot that goes into everything that we are creating, everything that we're choosing for our experience and having the understanding of it. And it's from multiple dimensions, multiple realities, multiple lifetimes, multiple experiences from different um, plays and roles. Like this time, you know, um, me being Laura, next time I might be a man, you know, or next time I might be whatever it is that I'm choosing to be in that lifetime for the experience from that perspective. And so having that and changing it and transforming it um, in our lives, uh, we, you know, we not can only shift it. We can move into something else, you know, um, at that point, but that's the different topic, but to stay on track with, you know, the, the topic of this video, you know, is uh, that we're not, um, you know, we're never alone, you know, and it's all been set up for you. We have everything there for you. And so when you're trying to, or you're going through certain situations, just know that you're never alone. That will help take and ease some of the, the suffering from it for you. And whenever, if you're coming into where you're transitioning into the next lifetime, know that there's people there that are going to meet and greet you um, based on your belief systems. But don't hold to it because once you get to the other side, you will understand and know <laughs> that it doesn't exist as you see it um, or know it here, right? And it's it's the cleansing, clearing of that. If you're willing to let go of this when we transition, it'll be a smoother ride for you, <laughs> right? Um, and so that's part of what I do. And so this is why I am 
and have chosen to come back is to help teach this information and help people to know as they're transferring and trans, trans, um, uh, they're going over onto the other side, you know, they're, um, they're able to do that with more grace and ease and it's not so much suffering because what happens when you get to the other side is although they may have come to get you, it's their essence, right, of that being that you understand that's your belief system that makes you and helps you to go to their side to receive you, right? And so as they receive you, the transference of the energy will um, subside at some point and you'll come into realization that this is just for the experience, right? And so it doesn't exist on the other side. So for instance, and I hate to ruin this for everybody, but like your the role that you're playing as far as like the mother, the brother, the sister, the pet, you know, that doesn't exist on the other side, right? And so <laughs> it's the transference of the information um, that we're relating to back there. And when that um, subsides and it releases and we go into the being on that side, then we um, we don't exist like that anymore. Because then we, you know, pick up another family or another experience and we go into that one, depending on where we're going and what we're choosing, right? And so I'm not going to take Laura, go to the other side with Laura, and then go and take Laura into another lifetime. It's going to be a different whole experience, right? I'm going to take all my knowledge and wisdom and understanding and my essence of my soul with me to another experience, but I'm not going to be the same human that I am here on the other side, and I'm not going to be child of my mother here that I'm on the other side. And you can see that for people, children who come into the lives and they say, you know, you're not my real mother, right? Because they are carrying with them from that lifetime into this lifetime, the memory of a last past lifetime, that uh, they are the... Um, a child of a different mother and so they're like in a new family and so you do have that experience and kids do have that and so if you take a look at that and research that on t you know on the youtube or the documentaries where kids will come in to a new lifetime and they know that the parents in this lifetime isn't the same parents as before because of our suffering and our identity our human version self and we don't understand the whole process yet but it's coming out um, on many different levels. A lot of people are teaching it, and that's part of what I'm doing. Um, we'll start to understand how that works because we're ready to understand it, right? And so it's been through evolution and hidden uh, for a very long time because they don't want you to know and they want you to believe, and of course, in their religions and their belief systems and things like that, and they hide it from you, those parts and aspects of it, but it's coming out. Um, and so truth is always going to be revealed no matter what. And it may be, you know, eons before truth fully is revealed on everything, but it always surfaces and it always comes up. And so we're always going to know the truth at some point, right? And so that's what I do, part of it. And here, because I do coach and then I do the channelings, of course, the information. I've had the experience, so I'm able to bring in that um, and, you know, teach from that point. Um, I am doing going to start doing a, a monthly group online, um, and that is um, a life review, uh, a pre-life re life review. So you get to um, kind of go into, we do a quick meditation, we kind of go into like the, the life review of this lifetime, and we can kind of view it, and then I can explain that more if you're interested in that, but I'll have some videos and stuff on the website, information if you're interested, check that out, reach out to me. Um, and if you're interested in a coaching session, anything like that, any other groups I might be having, um, definitely reach out, um, go to my website. That'll be posted in the um, descriptions below, all my information. All right, and thanks for tuning in. Happy journeys.